Here we go. Okay. So if this is what the central limit theorem states, um, it states that if you have a sample, if a population is, um, I don't have a sheet. Oh. Anybody else in the missing one? Okay. Um, so, if a population is uh, not normal, do you guys know what I mean by not normal? Not a bell curve. Right. Remember, guys, that normal distribution means bell curve. If you want to write bell curve on top of normal, then write it. And you start taking samples where the sample size is greater than or equal to 30. Um, then the sampling distribution of the sample means is approximately a normal distribution. So basically, if you start taking samples of any kind of data set, um, and your samples are greater than or equal to 30, then it will become a normal distribution. It will become a bell curve, which I'll explain more in a second. If a population is already normal, and you take samples of any size, then the sampling distribution of the sample means is a normal distribution. We will fill these out in a second, but first we're going to kind of try this experiment thing to talk about it. Okay, so let's say we had the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 7 on slips of paper and we put them into a box. Now, what would happen if you just pick numbers out of a box? What are your chances of getting a 1? 25%, 1 and 4, right? Because there's four pieces of paper in the box. So I'm going to draw a picture right now of the original distribution. All right, so here's like one, here's three, here's, was it five and seven, right? What shape would you call that distribution? Symmetrical, symmetrical there. It's symmetric, uniform. uniform. Symmetric means that it's the same on the left and right, but uniform means that it's straight across, right? And uniform is a better description. Symmetric also works, though, because it is symmetric. It is the same on the left and the right. It's definitely not a bell curve, right? You're not more likely to get a 4 than anything else. Because 4 is not even an option. So now let's start saying that we start grabbing pieces of paper from this. Um, and, by the way, you can put the piece of paper back. So... You could get a 1, put it back, and draw a 1 again. So let's start talking about all the options here. All right. So we got a 1 and a 1, a 1 and a 3, 1 and a 5, 1 and a 7. You guys see how I'm doing this? Okay. Um, what's the next thing then? 3 and a 1, 3 and a 3, 3 and a 5, 3 and a 7. And then give yourself a little bit of room. We're going to start listing again over here. A 5 and a 1, a 5 and a 3, 5 and a 5, 5 and a 7. 7 and a 1, 7 and a 3, 7 and a 5, 7 and a 7. <coughs> okay. Now, we're going to try to find the mean of all of these. I picked numbers that are easy to find the mean of. So let's split up the work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. All right. So, Caitlin, you got the first two. Find the mean of one and one. Find the mean of one and three. Brennan? These are yours, so here's Caitlin, here's Brennan, Sierra, you got this one, Jessalyn, this will be Natalie, here's Emma, 
Thomas, and Rihanna. All you got to do is find the average of your two numbers and put it next to the equal sign. Anyone's brain not working this morning and need my help? All right, Caitlin, what did you get? What's the average of one and one? one. Mm -hmm. What's the average of one and three? three. Good. Brennan? Mm -hmm. Sierra? Two. Two. <coughs> Natalie? Three. Emma? Five. Thomas? Five. Rihanna? Okay, so here are our answers. And so now instead we're going to make a new graph. We're going to make a graph of all the different possibilities here. So we're going to have to count them up. Got 16 choices, right? Okay. So let's see, I count one one and two twos, one two three threes, one two three four fours, one two three fives, two sixes, and one seven. If I add these up, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 3 is 13, 15, 16. All right, I got them all. I could do this with like a, I could do this with a regular frequency histogram or a, a relative frequency histogram. Let's just do a reg, regular um, <coughs> frequency one. So let's see, I'm going to go between, I've got, we'll do frequency over here, 1, 2, 3, 4. Down here I'll have my answers. So my first bar is gonna to go to one, and then two, and three, four, three, two, one. And this one was one, this was two, three, four. Do you guys see how this is beginning to look like a bell curve? Is that making sense to you guys? Now, what if instead I took samples of three numbers? So my first number would be 111, then it would be 113. We're not going to do it because that would be horrible. Okay, but what would happen then? What do you think would happen if I start taking n is 3 instead? It would be, it'd be very similar, but like one of them would be one, one, and three, right? And if I take in here, one plus one plus three and divide by what, I've got three numbers, then I'd have like 1.67. So we wouldn't have whole numbers anymore. We'd have a lot more options, right? Like one would be one and two thirds. So instead of having um, like bars like this, we would start having bars that were like, like skinnier bars that filled in the curve a little bit better. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm 